Napa know-how. There are lots of amazing cars on the road, but perhaps none more amazing than the paid-off car. It may not be pretty, but the price is right. Heck, if you keep that thing running, it'll actually start paying you. Because with Napa Rewards, for every $100 you spend, you'll get $5 off. So keep your car running longer, stronger with Napa Rewards, and watch the savings start rolling in. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. So what is she saying? Like, he needs to call his wife, like, not my number one. Instead, my infinite set of positive real numbers. It's like, <laughs> baby, you are all X such that X is greater than zero as a set. <laughs> what? What the fuck does this mean? <laughs> my wife would love it if I said that. <laughs> you are so uncountably <laughs> infinite in your scope. The inside of Lucinda's wedding ring. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because no matter how sure we are, we found the worst one. We're always wrong. I'm your host, Noah Illusions, <laughs> and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. Uh, you know who'd like to apologize in advance for what's about to happen? <laughs> uh, that'd be me. <laughs> if I'd that'd had to me. guess, I thought your opening line was going to be, you know what's a great race? <laughs> well, you know who's a great group of people with an amazing rich culture despite this movie? African Americans. <laughs> Want to be super clear about that up front. Yeah, we, and we're going to have to be this week. You'll see why soon. And sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I watched the Tribulation movies. <laughs> and that's what I'll be reviewing. Wacky Kirk Cameron and his band <laughs> brothers. We didn't do Prophecy 4. We should jump back into Prophecy 4. <laughs> Christopher Walken's so silly. He's not in it, but it's okay. I'll still do an we impersonation. Do <laughs> now, unfortunately, it's too late for that. So, Heath, tell us, what will we be breaking down today? Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> we watched Love Different. What's that the story of, Heath? <laughs> and, uh, okay, well, these are the exact words from IMDb. Oh, okay. Lindsay Walker, a Caucasian woman who grew up in a small, all-Caucasian town, gets already a job. Yep, <laughs> already uncomfortable. Correct. She gets a job at an African-American consulting firm. Way more uncomfortable. And finds herself in a complete... Culture shock. What the fuck is an African American consulting firm? You, you might ask. We'll find out, but not really. This they're, movie's they're terrible. The one that, that gives the all the handshakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well. If you love Birth of a Nation, but it wasn't made by African Americans, <laughs> you will love. This move. Nope. 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 You're just reading what I wrote over your introduction now. So, all right. So, a I'm lot not of, sure what actually happened. <laughs> right. So, often when we watch these movies, I'm embarrassed for everyone about the directors, the actors, craft services, everybody. But this was the first time I think that I personally was embarrassed by watching it. Yeah. Right? Like there were times in this movie where like I'm like, I'm so ashamed of myself that this is what I've chosen. <laughs> I could be contributing to science, y'all. <laughs> um, now, are, do I we could, have any I could die and donate my body to yeah, science? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, viewing firsts for you guys in this movie? Uh, yeah, for, for me, this is the first time I called somebody during the movie and asked permission to keep watching. <laughs> I, for the record, have a number of black friends. And I had one of them watch the trailer. And he said, yeah, you can finish watching, you Nazi-looking asshole, and then hung up angrily. <laughs> so, like, just barely, I was allowed to keep watching it. 
This is the first time I stopped a movie to ask Noah if we needed a black guest to watch the movie. <laughs> it was like a 10 minute conversation where I was like, I feel like, and you were like, we can't call them every time. And I was like, we well, don't. It's I, worse. It, it might be worse. Seems- <laughs> that's that's where I was with this, right? Because like on the one hand, yes, it's going to be super hard to go through this movie like as three white dudes and, 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 and not just feel insanely racist. But the other thing, too, is it would be impossible to call up one of my black friends and ask them to watch this movie without seeming incredibly racist. So I'm like without mm. clearly being like, and we printed you onto this metal coin yeah, right. uh, that you can trade in <laughs> later, uh, perhaps at an arcade. <laughs> <You'd like. laughs> um, now, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Um, yeah, okay. Uh, best worst. I'm actually going to use this section to remind everybody about our rollover plan on our one. That's still done. <laughs> that still applies, and we saved some up since the last time. Well, there you go. That's right. We didn't in the Christopher Walker movies. We did three. We didn't talk about it all. Really. <laughs> I'm going to go with two. Uh, Best worst child abuse advice. (sighs) A running theme throughout this movie will be, you got to hit your kid, man. You have got to hit your kid. Culminating in a will she hit her kid chariots of fire moment (laughs) at the end of the movie. I'm not going to spoil it for you. So fucked. But it is like a (laughs) She gotta hit her kid (sighs) And and secondly In best worst Internalized racism Because we should be clear This is a movie made by African Americans This is not a movie Made by like white people Where they got one or two white act Like African American actors This is is a movie made by African Americans I think African Americans who fought for the South during the Civil War would watch this movie and be like, nah, it's too far. Let me take a step back and see the message that they're sending. The oh. war was about the economy. This is, <laughs> this is this is something different. Holy shit. Yeah, it's it, we'll get there, obviously. and But it, I don't think we can possibly... I, I don't know that there are words that you could say to someone to get them ready for this movie. Um, so I was going to go with best worst untouched comic dominoes. All right. So I know it's a weird phrasing, but this movie spends so much time like setting up these convoluted comic premises that they then don't knock down <laughs> over and over. Again. Okay. I'm going to tell you a joke in the style of this movie to get you, give you an idea of what I mean. All right. Uh, uh, a horse and a marigold walk into a bar. There's a monkey bartender. And they sit down next to this leprechaun. They order a drink. The bartender says, Hey, a horse is fine. Marigolds have to answer a riddle to get a drink around here. So the marigold answers this riddle, gets his drink. They both get a beer. And then a insurance salesman walks into the bar and he says, this is a very unusual bar. <laughs> but Never mind. all of the characters in that joke are in blackface. That's what you <laughs> need to really well, right, right, right. No, there are like, other. not picturing a horse in blackface, you're really missing out <laughs> on what this movie <laughs> Now you're not missing out. Yeah, <laughs> we wouldn't want you to miss out. All right, well, before we endeavor to describe this movie, I feel like we're all going to need a minute to bolster our lots of black friends cred, maybe donate some money to the NAACP or something. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll apologize to Earth on behalf of humanity for all the unapologetic stereotypes that are love different. Typical place to deliver, start talking so I can put you on hold. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Sorry, one second. No, Kyle, Kyle, I said the health department gave us a D. D for deliver. Yes. Thank you. Not at all sorry about that. How can I help? Uh, right. Um, I was just looking for some food. To Sir, you to can't call us to order Blue Apron. We're a typical delivery place that well, delivers, so no, you well, can't call. But what's Blue Apron? Sir, it's the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. Sorry, one second. I said make the bags wet when you deliver them, Kyle. I know it's not raining. Wet. Yes, wet. Wetter. Wetter. What is happening? This is supposed to be easy. I just want to order. I know, right? But you know what is easy? Cooking with Blue Apron. With pre-portioned ingredients, step-by-step recipes delivered right to your door. You will love how good and feels it tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. Okay, 
Sorry, who do I speak to about ordering? I'm just trying. I'm sorry. Give me one order. second. Kyle, visible insects on the inside of our restaurant. I want people to see them if they make the mistake of eating here. See them, Kyle. Right. You can check out this week's menu. Get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash godawfulmovies. That's blueapron.com slash godawfulmovies. Big ones, Kyle. Oh. I don't. This is not hard. No, I mean order from you. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. I can take your order. Okay, um, I'd like a... Uh, uh, sorry, slow down. I'd like... Slow, to order. Sorry, slow down. I'd... Slower. I... Blue Apron, a better way to cook. <laughs> you gotta get past the first 50 pages, but I'm telling you, it's great. Once the dragons are in the picture, it's just genuinely a fun read all right i just don't have time to read you know i just got a lot of stuff eli hey noah what's up uh not much I, 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 why are the police here oh uh we reported this week's movie yeah yeah i helped guys this is a waste of police time we're gonna get in so much uh, trouble. Uh, 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 noah beg to differ this film posits all black people eat watermelon uh, yeah, and there may or may not be a scene where the black people all start a hay. What a is hay. a hay? You know what? That's not the point. Guys, hey. I'm, I'm sure it's hey. not exactly tasteful, but uh, it's, a black character tips a literal dollar. It's in here, officer. Right over it's here. It's on a computer. It's on, it got on my computer. Do, do they go in the computer and arrest the movie now? What they should. That's where the files they should. Are. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off with some of that notoriously clever Christian wordplay. You see, this movie is brought to us by Sunset Friday Entertainment, but Sun, like S O N, get it? Because ah. Jesus. Oh, wow. Sun. My, my first note sure here is did. music note. Oh, this Christian movie is going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> well,. Also, we should point out that the executive producer of this movie <laughs> uh -huh. is God. Yep. yep. First fucking thing you see on screen after the logos. Executive producer God. And then we meet a man whose kids think he's hilarious, comedying at us in a mirror. And in exactly the same way as you try to make a six-year-old laugh. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's not. Let me say. Okay, so all three people on the air right now are funny people. And that means that we've all had the experience where someone is like, oh, man, Noah's so funny. Noah, do something funny. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> this is that moment, except instead of saying, I hope your family dies of blood cancer, you, they, you said yes, and you had a toothbrush and a mirror to work with. I tend to go with the blood cancer thing because they never ask again. But the... This is that actor being like, oh, do something funny. Watch this space work with a toothbrush. Oh, my God. It's yeah. so it, it's like a minstrel show decided to do improv. It's so bad. <laughs> I need two ideas from the audience. Black guy, toothbrush. I heard black guy brushing his teeth. Perfect. That's me. Brush, oh. brush, brush, brush. Oh, my God. It's so offensive. Well, OK, so just to give you an idea because we're getting these various clips of him in the mirror or whatever. And at one point he has the shake weight, which is just a boundless well of comedy so much so that you don't have to do anything with it. You just have to use a shake weight, and that's apparently fucking hilarious. He wasn't even using it like you use a shake weight. Wait, no, uh-uh. Like, What's a shake weight? What? The shake weight, that thing he's shaking at the beginning, it is a, it's supposed to tone your arms, and it's a little machine. Watch the ad. I'm really excited for Heath to watch the ad. Yeah, really no heard shit. <laughs> just take a moment, pause this podcast, get on your phone and YouTube shake weight, and realize that that was thought up, produced... <laughs> And sold on television. It's a good time. I won't soil it for you. All right. You miss so much not being Shake on Twitter. Um, so, yeah. So now as he's goofing around in the mirror, his wife comes in uh, and, oh, how embarrassing when you're improving into a mirror and somebody comes in. It's right. And she feels about him the way I do. She's like, oh, this is this is really embarrassing. And bad. <laughs> And bad. You're setting our people back a lot just in the first scene right here. It's she terrible. says, as she's walking out, you look like a deflated 50 cent. And I'm just like, just leave this to us, lady. We, we've got it. 
I kind of like that one. <laughs> he does kind of. Like no, it kind of does. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now we, we're going to contrast that with uh, a white girl in the mirror also being funny. Yeah. Two faced lady from Right to Believe. Yes. 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 I am des- desperate yeah. to fuck wife from Right to Believe. But yes, that's the act. At some point, they're going to add a light. She's going to crawl out of the screen at me. I was <laughs> confident that was about to happen. <laughs> And instead of uh, the wife catching her, it's the son that catches her goofing off in the mirror. Okay, so I have a question about this son. I think I know what the question is, Eli. (laughs) Go right ahead, sir. His character is supposed to be misbehaved, but the behavior this young man (laughs) exhibits is not misbehaved unless it's like, Night out with my girls misbehaved. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> I, I could describe it, his performance in five letters, but only if I'm allowed to uh, hiss the first one. <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy that they have just chosen. Now, I don't know if that, and here's the thing. I don't know if this actor is currently at a camp being tortured into not believing he's a gay person. Or <laughs> fuck. if this kid was like, all the bad kids at my school are like, Thathy Thathafras, but he will spend the movie being like, uh, whatever, mom, get out of here, girl, with those pants and those shoes. <laughs> yeah. it's, he's not naughty. There's no chance the word faggotly isn't in brackets next to every line in the script for this kid. Jesus. Yeah, no, they, they he, he chose sassy, angry gay boyfriend the entire fucking time. Um, and you know what? It works. It works in this movie, damn it. Um, so, yeah, so this is also where the movie introduces its I feel like I'm Darren Aronofsky with my split screens and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. And, and here's what we're getting for a split screen, by the way. We're getting both sides of the kitchen with mom and the son. <laughs> That's the dumbest use of the split screen. Right? Right. <laughs> well, we want to see the reaction shots the whole time. <laughs> uh, Jesus. And, and just to prove how confusing they will make this young man's journey, the son is like, can I go play rugby with the girls after school? And her mom's <laughs> like, isn't rugby a little rough to be playing with girls? Every word in that sentence is confused the rugby it's america with girls but somehow that's bad because rugby's too rough but softball wouldn't be is that a remark on his sexuality i didn't know anything he's like i'm gonna join the field hockey team well aren't those pants a little long it's just i didn't get any of it well i i, I do want to point out that um Rugby is significantly more violent than softball if you're not a Republican. <laughs> so, Dude, Jesus. Too soon? Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> he's fine. He's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's no, got, he seems... He's he got health care. Pull through. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so he runs off... Uh, the son runs off without eating breakfast... Um, and then we have to cut over to the African-American dude having his breakfast. Reese's Puffs. Hells, Such yeah. Such a good cereal. He's got good taste. He's got good taste. Hey, but he's keeping now this is not related to the movie it's just something i wanted to he keeps the cereal in a separate container and that's something i've noticed poor people do is that a poor people thing that you take it out of the box <laughs> Dude, they gave you at the store to keep your cereal in and you put it in something else <laughs> yeah what? you know poor, poor people tend to buy extra they, they things buy to add, yeah to add <laughs> expense to their purchases. That weirded yes. me out. Did that not weird anyone else that you were like, why just not keep I mean, it in the box? I eat cereal like in the car on the way home, so I don't need that. <laughs> but like, I feel like it makes sense for other people. And also this movie, okay, this movie is very like almost not a Christian movie, but undeniably a Christian movie, right? It's like one of those things where like he couldn't sell this script. So he wrote, worked in six Christian things or whatever throughout the movie. So that Pierflix would buy it. And this yeah. is the first one. This is where the wife says, you should really go to church with me. me. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. can we go to your friend's one woman show or something? <laughs> <laughs> While I get a colonoscopy in the, in the audience now. Uh, colonoscopies uh, are way more fun than they're cracked up to be. Um, and now, okay, so now we have. Have a, you ever had one? Oh, yeah. Never had um, one. So uh, I'm to that age, I should be I've had one. one. You're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I've had something way further up my ass than you, bro. It's a snake, and do they do water? 
<laughs> is it just that's enema. they do not that's do enema. water no okay. they do not this they, yeah. it's just like a scope yeah mm-hmm. that's the scopy okay. um so all right so now that we've talked thoroughly about our assholes it's time to move on to the <laughs> uh the contrast of the driving to work scenes so we get the white girl and the black guy driving to work like in her cut now the white girl is is on the phone with a friend who just can't believe the exposition <laughs> Oof. and 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 we get a little comparison side by side. White people it, can do this, but black people can't do this. Uh, so, and it's so <laughs> fucking stupid. All right, so so it's the white girl and then the black guy. Both of them pull up at a red light next to a cop, one after the other. Right, a a a, a mildly good comic writer could do something with this. We did not have one of those. You mean <laughs> that white people when they pull up next to a cop don't. Turn their music up so that the cop can dance along. <laughs> it's so because that's what I do. That's <laughs> I don't know if that I was. Uh. I really identified with this scene. <laughs> hey, officer, you heard this song? You want some whiskey? Does, <laughs> some cocaine? Does the barrel of this gun look right? It does. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, bye. That's- I'm white. <laughs> Well, and then also, okay, so once that happened, I was like, okay, that was like, I my, my notes are literally just da fuck over and over again. But then they show the black guy coming up and I'm like, oh, okay, so we're trying to get the contrast and this black writer just has no idea what white people do when they see cops. But then again, untouched comic domino here. They don't do anything with it. He just looks nervous and waves to the cop. Yep. That's it. <laughs> he just switches his radio to the news. That's it. So now they they both arrive up. Oh, oh, I gotta I gotta explain the exposition that we were getting forced down our throats in that scene. Um, the white girl has quit her job at the all white consulting firm to move to an all black consulting firm. What, does that mean? what do they consult you on? Yeah, right. They, they they get forced to make those KKK cakes we hear so much about. Oh, That's I see. They, they come in, they make those KKK cakes that liberals want the conservatives to have to make, and then. Yeah, that's what they do. I see. That may, it may, the whole movie makes sense now. Well, this is a movie that contains classes for white people about <laughs> black people. So maybe there are black consulting firms where they just walk into <laughs> black owned businesses and they're like, oh, no, we need to really blacken this whole thing up. Let's just <laughs> really I'm going to get you some prints to put on the wall over here. Jesus. <laughs> so you start it- wearing this hat. <laughs> So now it's time for the elevator meet cute. Oh, this is fantastic. It is okay. <sighs> this is there is so much wrong with this scene. And I mean terrible when I yeah, say fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> that you do. So they get in this elevator, the two of them, and she very clearly presses the the three button. They're going up three flights. This will take, in my estimation, 21 years there are large (laughs) spaces between each floor on this building yes but so okay so they get on the elevator to go up there three stories he immediately puts his uh his his music in and starts screaming rap songs to this woman that he's never met in the elevator and like dancing like pushing his butt up against it like basically bill cosbying her in this elevator but also like Scream surprise singing along like he there's a mo, there's a it's a montage and there's a scene where he's mm-hmm. just like bah! Yeah. Rah! <laughs> Rah! which is not any music there's no like, bah! 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 <laughs> you don't listen yeah. to dubstep there at are, all there are some songs like that he does the, like the, he does the bullet thing like blah, blah, like right in her face it's really creepy yeah this is why mixed elevators are not a good <laughs> idea. Christ. Just Heath and Betsy Devos. Right now. <laughs> what are you working on? Gam notes. What are you working on? Education policy. For the entire... Co- oh, wow. <laughs> oh. So they get out of the elevator. She appears traumatized. That makes perfect sense. I really wanted yep. her to just like start screaming the Friends theme song back at him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at my book on tape. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. <laughs> chapter one. <laughs> so, so she goes into work. She gets to the third floor. Finally, she gets to the third floor. Um, she walks into the building to what I had down as music to fuck a middle-aged white lady to. I wrote, she, she appears to have wandered into an office porn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But porn for women. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so this is where we meet Sheena. Um, that's a lady that works there. 
Um, and also we learned that the white girl's name is Lindsay. Um, and then, you know, she's like, oh, I'm here to see the boss. I'm the new chick. And she's like, okay, I'll go get the boss. And while she's going to get the boss, another dude walks by and sees that there's a white lady there and is terrified. <laughs> it's like, it's like the day Marissa Tomei showed up on the set of A Different World. It's, just, it's like Sinbad walks around the corner. White girl, what the fuck is happening? She's terrified. <laughs> yeah, so at first, of course, he assumes that she's with the IRS because that's what white people do. But when he finds out that she's the new chick, he's like, how the hell did they hire a white lady? <laughs> that's yep. literally, yeah. Hi, I'm Lindsay the Caucasian. Yeah. It's it's terrifying. There's also this crazy moment where he comes back and he's like, and the, the girl's like, be nice to her. And he comes back and he's like, oh, all right. Uh, you want anything? A Coke, water, a Ciroc? Now, <laughs> what? I don't want to prove any parts of this movie true, but I don't know what a Ciroc <laughs> is. What Nor is a Ciroc? It's, it's a vodka. Well, okay, a vodka? Then, you yeah. and I don't drink, so that's why we don't know. It's not that oh, we're white. He, he didn't offer her, he it, offered her a two in the afternoon vodka. It's a vodka owned by a famous African American uh, musician, I believe. I see. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. So, yeah. and But that's this movie's idea of humor. He offers her vodka and she says, a what? And he goes, you don't know what that is? And then apparently we laugh. Okay. So, so like offering a beverage at your office is a racial thing? That seems like a weird. He should have offered her white girl drinks. He should have been like, "Would you like a soy, ten, 110 degree mocha latte?" And I would have been like, oh, okay, I get it. I get that joke. Would you like the tears of the people that your family oppressed to allow you your wealth and privilege? Oh, okay, I get that joke. Sure. I'm thinking back. We walked into Andrew's office. It was like, no, 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 tequila, and so it was so, fun. Oh, yeah. Jesus. He did not react well to that. <laughs> So, all right, so now Mr. Chamberlain, the boss, is ready to go, ready to see her. But before she does, this, the, Sheena has to warn her he's on strong medication that messes with his brain and gives him hallucinations. What a masterfully subtle comic setup. What a weird <laughs> choice. Yeah. Did they shoot the scenes with this character and they were like, well, he's got Velcro for a beard, but he thinks we need <laughs> something else. <laughs> What the <laughs> fuck was up with that guy's beard? Uh, it's the crazy... It, it, look, you don't have to watch all of these movies. He's in the trailer. You should absolutely watch this movie. If only when the ACLU comes for us, you can be witnesses on our behalf. <laughs> but you should watch this movie just for this character's beard. I've never seen a human with this kind of facial hair. No, it's it's mold. It's like it's... Yeah. Velcro. It's like, it just looks like he taped Velcro to his face. I, I, you know, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the wardrobe person was like, yeah, we're going to need a little Velcro on your face. That's that wouldn't be the weirdest decision they made in this movie. <laughs> he looks like a drunk person made a Mr. Potato Head like <laughs> out of Lawrence Taylor's face. It's just like halfway up his <laughs> cheek. It's nowhere near. It's so weird. And also, I want to point out once again, completely untouched comic domino. They go all out of their way to set up this. He hallucinates thing. There is never going to be a joke based on that. I mean, no, there sort I of is at the end, but. Like mostly it more felt like they originally filmed this scene with other people in it and then had to explain them away when they quit the movie for being too racist. Yeah. I mean, he will occasionally hallucinate throughout this film, but that is it. Yeah. Well, through this scene, through this yeah. scene and never again, he'll be in the rest of the movie. But yeah, once in a while he'll turn and he'll say something to someone who's not there. And then we'll yeah. see that person momentarily, but never like in a funny way or in such a way as to like confuse her as to who he's talking about. Nothing. It's just, yeah, they, they apparently think the setup is all you need. The punchline can simply be the end anyway. <laughs> so, so with that in mind, she comes in and she says, you know, I'm going to be really good for your firm. I know black people pretty good. I Totally relate to you people. Sorry, you peeps. I relate Us. to you peeps. It's so Us this whole people. movie. God. Ricky uh. Rod just crosses her arm in front of her chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she just does. He... That literally basically happens later in the movie. She might as well just start naming black people. Just like Barack <laughs> Obama. Half credit. Uh, it's Stephen <laughs> Douglas. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Al Jolson. Get out. Get out. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, and because he says, you know, oh, I think I'm going to team you up with a black guy so you can understand black people to which she responds. Oh, I want you to know I am not 
at all racist. That exact <laughs> performance. Yep. At which point any human would go, so you're a racist. Are you a <laughs> That you're a racist? <laughs> But instead, well, and he he's not exactly buying it. So he gives her the three question blackness quiz. Oh, I am. No, no. Just don't worry about it. We don't have to talk about this scene. Yeah. If you're about. culturally sensitive, just fast forward 10 minutes. OK, this 10 minutes. Episode. Are we going to say 10? <laughs> How long's the movie? Just go listen to the other episodes. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to have another one next week. Yeah, we have four. All right, so I, I got to go through this. The three questions on the how well do you know black people quiz. She says, he says, a fight is happening in front of you. You pull out your phone. Do you use it to call the cops or videotape the fight? Guess which is supposed to be the black answer. I, I don't well, get we're this. We're going to get to it. We're going to get <sighs> to it because the answer is her answer is call the police to make sure everyone is is in need of help. Except she says, call the popo. You're right, because she's That's trying to black it up a bit. Words. Right, she's trying to help him out. Then he <sighs> sings a song. Yep, and, and she doesn't know the last lyric. I really wanted him to set her up on the N-word. She's like, <laughs> finish this rap with that N. No, you can't do it, can you? Can I what thought does I rhyme told with trigger? y'all. <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah, so she doesn't get that. And then fi the final question. This is so insane to me. He says, you hear someone screaming in distress, obviously needing your help. What what would you do? And she's like, I would help them. He's like, oh, you got that one wrong, too. And and to prove it, he calls in the two black characters from earlier, the Sheena and the guy who was afraid of her and offered her a vodka, apparently. Craig, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And they do a little mini racist skit. As an answer oh. to each of them, he says, "What would you do?" And they're like, "Oh, I'm filming it." Just like, "Oh no, a world star!" They're just like, eh. and then they they get the song right, and then they explain that it should should they have encountered trouble, they they would run away because black Fuck people don't that person are incapable of altruism. I, is is that message. even a stereotype? I don't. Is that I a, hope not. I just ne I've never heard that. I've never heard that as a stereotype. I've heard most terrible stereotypes. I haven't heard that one. <laughs> I grew up in upstate New York. No one's ever been like, and black people will run away if you need help. Right. <laughs> exactly. I lived in South Georgia and I never heard that. So, yeah. So, appar but apparently that's what this black writer, director, and star decided to go with in his film. So, now speaking of him, it's time to team her up with Mr. Campbell, the guy from the elevator. So that he can teach her how to be blacker. That is the setup. That's the precept of this whole movie right there. <laughs> yep. This guy is going to have two days to blacken her up a bit. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's just, and it's every, it's, it's worse than you think. So, all right. So, oh, and of course we also have to shoehorn Mr. Harrington into this scene. Yeah, he's like waiting mm -hmm. in the hallways like, yeah, you're going to be meeting Mr. Harrington once you know black people enough. Mr. Harrington, get on in here. And he's just like, hey, how you doing? I, I seem to have no problem talking to a white person who can't name all their favorite characters from In Living Color. But for some reason, <laughs> she's got to like go study up um, on the first six seasons of The Cosby Show. Fire Marshal Bill, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just refer to the Cosby show as a black show? You're fired. Um, so <laughs> don't crush show. that. Don't do that for me. Is that not? Is so that, there, is it there, not? Are, there are there are some black people in it. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> Lots. I, so, I also, mostly right. <laughs> that's how I've based my entire name with African Americans. I, now that doesn't surprise me a lick. So, <laughs> and I want to point out just how brutally minute by minute this movie has been up till now. Okay, up to this point, we have watched people brush their teeth to get ready in the morning, have breakfast, drive to work, arrive at work, ride up the elevator, meet the boss, meet the 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 the, the fucking like literally. This movie has been minute by minute so far, which is why it's so ridiculous when she meets Neek, right, the the main character. And he says, you must be hungry. Let's go get some lunch. I'm like, it's 908. <laughs> it's like you it, assuming you guys start your work day at nine. It is 10 after right now. <laughs> what are you fucking hobbits?
And I just want to say, I am so glad. We all were so afraid of where he was going to take her to eat. <laughs> <laughs> all, of, all of our notes are like, I'm turning the movie off. I can't do it. I can't. There's only so much racism I can describe on the radio for my great-grandchildren to listen to. <laughs> Oh, I also want to point out as they're leaving for lunch, it, like the uh, Neek is like, hey, you want to watch me fuck with the boss a little bit? And he messes with him about one of his hallucinations because I guess the guy has a hallucinated girlfriend and he's mm. like, hey, you know, your girlfriend looks a little upset. And I thought to myself then, OK, if they if they have like the two of them come in later and he's having makeup sex with his girlfriend, that's worth the setup. <laughs> Anything less than that's not. And we get less than that. So, yeah, so they, they set off to satisfy their hobbitesque meal schedule. Um, but And it's not soul food, and it's not Roscoe's chicken and waffles, and it's not Grandmama's house of watermelon and Kool-Aid, as we would be expecting at this point in the movie. Instead, we get a 25-minute establishing shot for They Went to Chili's. Well, <laughs> it's this place that very clearly paid for an ad in the middle of the movie. Right, because yeah. there's a whole big establishing shot of like everybody loves this Cuban restaurant, and it's like people <laughs> might as well walk in front of the camera and be like, "What are the specials? What aren't the specials?" <laughs> like genuinely, there's like a three minute panning shot slash advertisement for this restaurant in the middle of this movie. Yeah, so we we settle in from that. We've got the two of them sitting across from each other, and this is where she she learns about black guy nodding and thinks it's so cool. <laughs> Is that is that do black people nod at each other? I I'm just like I have so many I have all the same questions that she does in in this movie. All right, so I've worked in a place where it's like like where it's almost all women and just a couple of guys, and in those instances, guys just start nodding at each other, like yeah, I have a penis too. Um, so I I, I believe this. I don't know that it's true, but I definitely buy. I'm it. gonna just start nodding at every stranger and then just like figuring out a group we're in. I'm just like oh, man boobs, both of us. But he's done. you're he's done. gonna end up in okay. a white supremacy thing. You should just yeah. know that <laughs> the people who are going to return your nods are not going to be a man boob script. Wind up. Right? I'm going to end up, up having gay sex and you're going to end up in a white supremacy. <laughs> That's who and I'm just going to get stoned an awful lot. Yeah. yeah. So and, and also, Noah's <laughs> going to continue to nod at people for the reason he nods at people. <laughs> <laughs> you hold. You hold. Okay. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. No, no, white guy with dreadlocks, <laughs> I just figured, you know. Um, so, yeah, and by the way, just to reinforce the minute-by-minute minute nature of this film, at this point in the film, Neek has to pee. So he gets up, walks over to the bathroom, and we watch as the lady, as Lindsay, waits for him to come back. I thought I well, was kidding about it, but no. <laughs> she nods at a lady, and the other lady's like, no, I don't have any drugs. <laughs> that was That was the point of that moment. <laughs> so all right and now we watch the food arrive at length no th this movie and my aunt kathy's instagram account have a lot in common <laughs> what? all right so now it's time for the i put my foot in my mouth scene about how she doesn't have any black friends <laughs> and she, she doesn't know why that's bad he's like oh do you have any black friends she's like ah no why would i have is that bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what you know I have a job. I work with you. Why would I? You seem I mad. Are you mad? <laughs> but now, as bad Nick. as that is, his response is even more ridiculous. He says, that's really racist. Are you sure? Because I don't think you have any Armenian friends. You big well, it? Right. it was a joke because she, right. she goes, oh, and he goes, no, nah, I'm just kidding with you. And she's like, do you have any white friends? And he's like, no, I have never had a white friend. That's a lot weirder. <laughs> <laughs> that's... <laughs> the whole scene made me very uncomfortable. It felt like a weird test. I don't know. You ever have a friend who's got a friend who does that thing where he pretends he wants to fight you? Oh, my God. You're a step ahead right? of me. We're like, oh, you want to you wanna fucking fight? And you're like, oh, my God. Oh, absolutely not. And they're like, ha, ha, I'm just fucking with you. And then the rest of the night, you're mad at that person because they threatened you. <laughs> That's what this scene was for racism for me. It was just yeah. like, you don't have any black friends? And I was like, I do. I do. Well, don't worry. That was just a joke. Oh, okay. I you don't. I don't have any white friends. That seems weird. Is it? Because the first one was a joke. I don't know how to feel. <laughs> Stop doing the flinch thing. I just, I'm not, I don't want to. I'm I don't want to play this game. I'm 30. We're a boy. We're 30. adults in a restaurant. If you touch me, I'll call you the show police. Show me that wrist lock. Come. Show me the wrist lock again, though. That was cool. 
Oh. But now, but to be fair to this guy, though, I feel like this character, if she said, oh, wow, no white friends, huh? Do you have any black friends? Nope. Hispanic friends? Nope. <laughs> Male friends? Nope. Female friends? Nope. Right. Non-binary friends? Nope. So, you know, there's also that. Also, I love how bad they are at finding the things that, like, a white person wouldn't know that a black person would know, right? Because he's like, yeah, I went to an HBCU around so-and-so, and she's like, what does HBCU mean? Just, like, 94.5% of people would ask at this yeah, point. who says that? That's Nobody. historically black college or university. So it's not even a legitimate acronym. There's a fucking <laughs> O in there. And who says that? Who wouldn't just be, they're in uh, Maryland. He'd just be like, I went to Howard. Just say yeah, you went right, to Howard. That, right. Don't be fucking weird about it. Yeah. That's right. a great university well, say you went to. to which she replies well we don't have any hwcus and i'm like oh yeah what? you <laughs> think we didn't have any all white colleges <laughs> are you sure about that? <laughs> care to take a walk with me 50 uh, years in the past <laughs> <laughs> right somebody would or, or yeah exactly do you want to go to harvard right now so yeah and and, and of course because this movie doesn't skip seconds. It's now time to watch the dessert pitch. This is where we meet their racist waiter. Well, and he, he wants a threesome. Well, right? yeah, clearly, clearly. Yeah. That's uh, what that that is. One hundred percent. And he's doing like the awkward like physical contact of connecting three people before a threesome <laughs> starts. He's like con- touching one's arm and the other yeah. one's I get so it. creepy. Yeah, I'm I mean, the strawberry I... spoon across me. Like it's really, it's really awkward. <laughs> okay. No, but that brings up a great question because what he's offering him is vanilla chocolate swirl ice cream, and I would, I have to ask the Neapolitan snob on the line, do you have to lick those one half at a time? <laughs> you don't mix your flavors. It's just pretty simple. You don't mix your flavors. If you want to mix <laughs> your flavors, you don't do it. It's just you. There are flavors, and there are non. I don't want to get into this. I'm that not is ready so for Hasidic this. of you. Separate but equal on strawberry. <laughs> He's a Plessy man. He's a Plessy man. Or no, he's a Ferguson man. Whatever it is. He he supports Plessy v. Ferguson. I love some Plessy. (laughs) (laughs) I love... That's my new character. Guy doesn't know that Plessy doesn't mean pussy. He's my new character. (laughs) Oh yeah, let's go get some Plessy. Eh, eh, eh. (laughs) Sure, he'll make it into an ad eventually. Um, so yeah, okay. So and then also uh, again with the stupid like oh black uh, white guy or white lady wouldn't know this bit. He's like oh we need to get out of here. I'm starting to get the itis, and she's like I have Tylenol. Wait, <laughs> yeah. So she she, she has ty- she thinks he has the inflammation, <laughs> so she has Tylenol in case he's inflamed generally anywhere. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Yeah. So uh, oh also. We have to watch him tip very, very poorly here. Tips a dollar. Ugh. Wow. Uh, that's yeah. not a thing your movie should reinforce. No, it really. And and the way they're playing it is, oh, that waiter was being an asshole. So all I'm going to give him is a dollar. And it's just like, yeah, but still like. That's yeah, still not good. You don't, yeah. that's he was not gross, tipping. but just, you know, in the movie tip. Anyway, and yeah, well, message. and then beyond that, also in real life, if your waiter's a, an asshole, you still fucking tip him, right? When you're an asshole to somebody, you don't get your goddamn pay docked for it. You know, just don't be a yeah. I mean, that's just actually tip. true of us because they take their money back. But I, but most people, they don't. <laughs> well, right, right, yeah, exactly, exactly. Twenty um, percent, don't be an asshole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So 20%. now we minimum. Well, not minimum. Oh, well, yeah. 25 so now, if they offer you a threesome. Yeah, you get, that would have been thank fun. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, okay. Now we finally, for the first time in this movie, skip minutes. Um, so we cut to that evening where uh, Neek is now in bed with his wife. And she wants she wants to make sure that he goes to the grocery store tomorrow to buy food with her sister's food stamp card. But he doesn't want to because... Food stamps is is embarrassing. It's uh, it's shameful to to need help with food. You know, sadly, that's that's I'm, correct. I'm sure that's but, correct. Yeah, that's, I'm sure. It, it but that's terrible. why would you reinforce it in your movie? It's the like <laughs> right. of all the horrible things about the world, and it is just an ever 
suffocating, horrible hole of blackness. The the stigma around needing help with food. There's no better thing we do. The, that's the best program. There are a lot of programs where I'm like, I don't know if we're doing it right. But the feeding people who want some help with food, take it. Take it all. If tomorrow they were like 10 times the amount of people are getting food stamps. Awesome. A hundred times. Hooray. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah I, I just well, and again, it's fine to bring this up if you're then going to use that to like actually make a statement on how it shouldn't be stigmatized. Instead, it's just used as a comic. Oh, he's going to be so embarrassed kind of a thing. Oh, also, this was just such a weird fucking throwaway line. She's like, yeah, my sister can't go to the store. And she's like, he's like, well, how's she doing? And his wife says her ankle bleeds when she walks. What, what the, the fuck could be wrong with her? A wound. She's got a, <laughs> a bullet from the I, war. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Also, we have to have the uh, jealous wife moment where he goes, yeah, I'm training a woman at work. And she's like, what do you mean a woman? I mean, did yeah. not. Like literally hate. the words I said. Yep. The male That's that. Female. Yeah. So <laughs> they have a they have a rocky relationship. Um, and then a quick iMovie transition later, and we're back to Lindsay at home on her phone for the least useful scene in this movie. This yep. is really weird. Yeah. She's just talking to her friend about the Peach last scene tea being right? okay. Her friend's in the, like a laundromat or something, and the, the only thing that happens is her friend just keeps looking at this stranger's phone right next to her. Well, that's because that's where her lines were. I guarantee you that's where her fucking lines are. That were. would be great. That makes so much sense. <laughs> Why else would she? Yeah, exactly. But but at any rate, completely useless scene where she's just like, yeah, also he was, we had a scene with him and now it's a scene with me. How you doing? So, and then we head to a farmer's market, which is scored as they so often are with gangster rap. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> very suddenly, by the way, yes. very suddenly, like a like, pop scare. There's no transition. It's just like, oh, OK, well, I'll see you on Friday. Motherfucker, I will stab you in the. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the lyrics. Yeah. So, yeah. And I'm like, oh, is she here to learn black shopping? And yep. she is. She is. So now it's time to to let it all out. And it's time for a pop quiz about the stereotypes. I bet they do this sensitively. Yeah, so the first question is, do all black people eat chicken? Okay, okay. I honestly don't get this one. Like, first of all, obviously, no. Uh, all the blank people don't eat black. Like, that's just crazy. <laughs> but how is that negative either way? Chicken's good. Who doesn't like chicken? I don't, but but also like, uh, you, you take out the vegetarians, and I'm pretty sure all the white people like occasionally eat chicken. Yeah, thank, so what? are we talking about yeah but yeah but this is where she says yes i think or, or whatever yeah like it, 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 it like and then sophie's he says, choice she's like yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> i knew it all along <laughs> and uh he says no that's a stereotype how about watermelon again why, watermelon's delightful why is that a bad thing <laughs> i don't understand I don't care much for watermelon, but yeah. So, and, and she says no. And he's like, no, yeah, no, we actually all do. But is that why you water. don't like black people because of the watermelon? Not like <laughs> That's crazy. Well, what's so crazy. He goes, we do. And we be tearing it up. And I'm just like, wait, no, it's that's not. <laughs> why? No, what movie. message are you trying to send? That movie. she's not racist enough. No yeah, like, movie, bad movie. <laughs> If no. it was like it was like black people all like soy cheese, that would be offensive. Like I would understand <laughs> that's, that's a bad stereotype. Yeah. I told now, Heath he's having barbecue tonight when he comes over, but I'm actually just <laughs> making a big thing of soy fondue. I think he might hit me. I'll let you guys know. Soy fondue. Melted Jesus. soy. <laughs> it doesn't melt so much as it separates, but if, yeah, you, get exactly. it, if you get it on a cracker. It's bad. It's real bad. <laughs> Depends on the cracker, but one way or the other, it's going to be pretty bad. Everything um, I eat is bad. So I should point out that at this point in the movie, Eli had already watched it. So I started messaging him like, oh, my God, I can't fucking believe this. And he's like, where are you in the movie? I said, I'm in the farmer's market. He's like, has the hay happened yet? I'm like, no, I feel like that's not going to be a what do you mean kind of a moment. Oh, so I'm just going to say no. And then immediately after I unpaused from that message, the hay happens. 
So, so he's like, <laughs> you know, a hey, and, and and she says, "What's a hey?" And I, to be fair, I also didn't recognize a hey. To which point, he he summons all the other black people <laughs> in the world. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he goes, hey, hey, and the other black people go, hey, hey, and then they begin to they gather in a circle. <laughs> the African American, the white people do not. The whites are all terrified, and they they all begin to dance uh -huh. because they, s someone chanted "Hey!" They, they form a Soul Train dance line at one point. It's the best. I'm so fucking excited to use this, <laughs> Eli. This is the entire rest of our weekend. Oh, well, this is what we're doing next time we see Ishmael. We're just going to be like, hey, <laughs> hey, and then we'll wake up in the hospital. And he's going to and... beat the fuck out of us. And we'll yeah, deserve exactly. it. Like, man, that, he really didn't have pillow hands, as it turns out. Hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my message to Eli immediately after this scene was over was, I can only live in a world where I've seen that now. That's disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then, of course, after it's all over, uh, she tries to do it, too, but she can't because she's too white to do a, a hey. Yeah. We're still trying it anyway. Eli. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe in all if we, moments. Maybe if we dress up or something, it'll, I don't know. We'll come up with something. I have a costume. In my I no, figured you I, might. No, please don't tell people about that hey. costume. So, <laughs> so now hey. we're going to hey. <laughs> just stand in there yelling hey at all the black people. He's it back. I think we're doing it. You're doing it too hard, man. Hey. Just hey, 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 hey. <laughs> so as they pass by, <laughs> now they, they head over to the cash register. Um, and during this. Uh, God, Jesus, the, the scenes in this movie are so fucking useless. So before they can get to the, uh, the cashing out portion of the movie, um, he runs into Sister Brenda, who seems to be worried that he's dating a white girl. But no, he's not. Very upset that he's dating a white girl. And he's like, no, 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 no. I would never mix the races. And she's like, oh, OK. How come I never see you at church? We just move past that. We just yeah. move past her being like, no, you can't dilute the bloodline. <laughs> Otherwise, the seventh son of the seventh son won't grow up to be a wizard. Well, OK, so, yeah, this movie for a long time, for the entire first two acts will have like people mistaking them for being dating and, and making like, uh, Oh, white people and black people shouldn't date kind of comments and everything that would kind of make sense. If this movie was about these two people falling in love, but it's not, <laughs> but it's it is, not but... <laughs> like nope. they ne there is never a moment in this movie where they're like, Oh, by the way, it is okay for white and black people to date each other though. Like, we seem to have been making the opposite argument throughout this movie, but but that is okay. They are less progressive on this than Ken fucking Ham. Yep. <laughs> yep. Anyway. And it's weird, because we watched this the week of the loving thing, so I was also, like, seeing all the Facebook posts about, like, <laughs> oh, 50th anniversary, and then I turned that <laughs> off and would watch this movie where a character's like, hey, are you dating her? No. No. I wouldn't. Don't be crazy. Do that. Yeah. Uh, also, by the way, um, Sister Brent, the, you the hays get planned apparently. Sister Brenda's mad she missed the hay, and yeah. they plan to do a hay at church next week. Yeah. yeah, that sounds like a fun thing. It really white people need white people need a version of this. I feel like we need a white version of of the hay. Could we not? No, like stand your ground. Hello, stand your ground. Hello. Stand your ground. How's it going? How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Is there an inappropriate Something. time to start a hay? Because it seemed compulsory. So if there was yeah. like a funeral, could you be like, hey, and everyone would be like, really, Brian? Hey, hey, this is embarrassing. Hey, your eulogy was beautiful, but this is sort of right in the middle of it now. Hey, hey. <laughs> Do they get confused if they're listening to what's going on? <laughs> There's a wake up in the morning and I, and I say, hey, hey, and they're trying to dance, but then she sings more. You'd get plenty of non-blondes, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Four non-blondes is so, the name of that band. Yes. No, Song's well called What's Up. I know it's called What's Up. I know it's not called whatever <laughs> I called it before. <laughs> Don't need to tweet at me. I know what that song is called. <laughs> They're going to tweet at you anyway. So now it's time for his poor people card isn't working scene. Ugh. 
Gross. It, Gross. Uh, it's so, again, because they don't ever address the fact that stigmatizing people on food stamps is a bad thing. They just make play it as a like, oh, it's so embarrassing, poor black guy. Yeah, that's what and, I meant by gross, to be clear, not the ha having yeah, to use. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're going to have all my money. You're going to have all my taxes for food. I'm, you, all of it. Take it all. Roads, schools, well, food. I'm I so also happy. love that like, this movie is postulating apparently that white people don't know what an EBT card is. Yeah, but hey, fun what? fact, more white people on food stamps than black people. But uh, also, she literally hasn't heard of it. Right. She's like, just, she thinks it's just a different brand of credit card. Despite the fact that the cashier seconds ago turned to his boss and says, yeah, his food stamp card isn't working. She's like, what is that? He's like, it's a food stamp. Where were you? He's white. You speak their language, don't you? <laughs> oh. Oh. So now it's time to go see... Pro pro it's time to go see Professor Black, the man who teaches blackness to white people at a college. I got it out, yo. I, I was like, I, I I wrote that line out, that intro line, and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to make myself say that, and I did. Uh, Been worried no, about it all night. <laughs> quick question: What is Professor Black, who teaches it, white people about black people? What is he doing when we first see him? <laughs> he's, he's tap dancing, doing a little soft shoe, tap dancing, he's doing a little soft shoe, <laughs> he's soft tap dancing. Shoe. That's actually happening. Yep. <laughs> oh, and and so then he introduces her. And he goes to shake her hand, but black people style, and she doesn't know how to do it. And there's video game noises involved in those, apparently. And but she she's not, not allowed to those. make them. She's he's it, like, Brr, and she's like, Brr, and she just imitates it, and he's like, hey, hey, not for you. And she's like, oh, what was the caca caca? Like, <laughs> <laughs> do I have to go? Brr, uh? Most of this movie is just this white lady copying what she sees and a black guy being like, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> you can't do it. You do it, it was also, it, there was also a white guy watching the movie saying the same thing most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> what is that camera thing with the noise? Like, white culture is so boring. We have none of this cool stuff. We need to, like, step it up. Yeah, right. And now the day is done. Um, because they, they, they pull up and he's like, yeah, "It's been a good day at work." And I'm like, "Wow, you got paid to go to the farmers market and tease a later scene." That was it, huh? Yep. And I love at this point she says to him, "She goes, yeah, you know, I had no idea how uncultured I was." I'm like, "That's not what uncultured means, no, nope. at all." Nope. nope. No one in this movie has culture except in the sense that they have bacteria growing on them. <laughs> I uh, she's <sighs> gonna run into the Christian bookstore for a baby gift. And now explain to me this scene. She's like, oh, yeah, Sheena's having a baby. I'm going to get her a baby gift. And he's like, oh, that's a white thing. Do, do African-Americans not give baby what? gifts? I feel like <laughs> I feel like they do. I don't. I mean, you know, he knows better than me. He's black, I guess. I don't. Yeah. Huh. But then he decides, what the hell? I'll get a gift to, um, for her, too. Just take my credit card. It's in the glove box. And you can buy gifts for both from both of us. But she accidentally grabs the EBT card. Oh, no. Honestly, this wouldn't be surprised if EBT is good at Christian bookstores, which is where <laughs> she's going. <laughs> wouldn't be surprised at all. It's the one time I'm not okay with it being used. That's, I just, yeah, that's, right. that's the limit. <laughs> yeah. And this is where we're going to meet Bun Quisha. That's the cashier. Uh, and I feel like in this movie, I have to point out that's a white person. I just don't feel like I have to mention that. Uh, but yes, Bun Quisha is like hanging out with an improv comic who is desperately trying to impress you, a.k.a. hanging out with an improv comic right here, hurtful, <laughs> right here on the line can still hear you. You could wait, <laughs> mute me and then do that. Line. To, to be fair, Eli's Bone Quisha character is way funnier than this one. <laughs> yeah. I put the French nails on. It's a whole lot of fun. <laughs> So, so, yeah, so Bon Quisha's thing is that she talks too much, and it's just hilarious. Like, obviously, we would need seven minutes of screen time for her, right? And Bon Quisha, like all white characters in this movie, save one, is also very much into mixed babies and miscegenation. Is, she, is it racist to be pro-mixed baby? It's, <laughs> it's anti-white baby, right? I think there's a a, a a like a gradient, 
Like, if you don't want any mixed babies, it's racist. I don't think it's a gradient. I do. I, 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 I'm I think, pretty sure it's a gradient. <laughs> I think that there's, you're not, if you don't want any mixed babies, that's bad. I, yeah. thought, you were, yeah. I thought you were going to talk about a color gradient. Okay. I, oh, I, I was quite confident you were about to ex- describe a spectrum of color with some adjectives, and I was going to be against it. Like a coffee to a birch. Yep, is all- there it is. <laughs> See, this yep. is this is why I didn't want a black guest on, um, y'all. So, and then you're allowed to be okay with it, and then you're allowed to think it's progressive and cool. And then when you are real, when you describe it as chocolatey hotness, I think it goes the other direction, <laughs> which is what Bonquisha well, says. Well, Bonquisha <laughs> describes the guy because she's like, "I saw you with your boyfriend out. Ooh, he's some chocolatey hotness." Now, I want to point out, number one, no one has ever described this guy as chocolatey hotness. Like, he looks like Kadeem Hardison's brother that couldn't quite make it in film. Um, And I also want to point out, he wrote all these lines. Like, there are multiple times when people will talk about how hot he is in this movie. Those will be the only times anyone has talked about how hot this dude is. So, yeah, so she suffers through Bonquisha. Then she goes to the cash register. And when you know it, Bonquisha's there. And she uses the EBT card, which doesn't work, which she knew, right, from before when it wouldn't work. But that doesn't stop her from going off on Bonquisha in a way that I find impossibly disturbing. Ugh. You see, because she's learned to be African-American and that oh means- god is that what they were going for here she was Absolutely. clearly she's, told to act like an angry black has, lady stereotype oh my god. she has learned to be an angry black woman very upsetting that's and she can't scene. even do oh, it oh and right. that's what those gesticulations were about she, yeah she's done yeah. she's doing the snap thing oh, but she's doing it wrong she's like poking herself in the eye it's very <laughs> oh, the whole god. thing's very upsetting and not real funny bad. Real yeah bad. my oh, notes are but- i would like to die I don't want to be in a world with this movie. I would like to die. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my my notes were all like, I cannot figure out what the hell is supposed to be happening in this scene. And I was, I'm so glad that I wasn't able to, because then I had an extra 24 hours where I didn't know that. Oh, that's uh, great. I, I missed those. I feel like this was a test for the white lady actress that she failed miserably. They were like, all right, <laughs> act like an angry black, black lady. She's like, mm-mm, snap that. Wow, that was way too eager. Cut. We were <laughs> just were like, testing cut. her. Jesus. And she tur- they were like, cut. And she turns around. She's like, good, huh? And they're like, mm. So that's it. That's a wrap for today. Everybody go home. Everybody go home. Movie right there. What? Guys? Guys? The lights are all shutting off on the set around her. <laughs> Guys? <laughs> So, Neek. <laughs> speaking of which, so now Neek shows up and drags her away from the register, pays for the stuff and drags her away from the register. He says, what's wrong with you? To which she responds, Ugh. thug life. Oh, my fucking thug God. Thug life. I forgot. She and wrote, and she in the way that life. I just said it, not just. Just like that. Not just, nope. you know, thug life. Just ter- like. How many stereotypes can we shove into this movie? She just like rolls outside in a shopping cart with hydraulics. Am I black yet? <laughs> Is this black culture? God damn it. Oh, so okay. offensive. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. I was just, I was embarrassed for like at this point for the people listening to us having watched this. I was embarrassed for my family six generations back at this point. And this is where she meets his wife, you know, and they have the whole like conversation about like, why the hell did you do that? Mm -hmm. To which she replies, I should have called the police. And they explain that African-Americans don't call the police. But okay, first of all, what would she be calling the police about? I don't. The the fact that her credit card was declined? Slow lane at the register. (laughs) Oh, what? But also, I love at this point, she says, well, what would you have done? He said, well, I'm black, so I wouldn't have said anything or I'd have got shot. And I'm like, oh, that must be why I've never seen black women loudly complaining to cashiers so often. It's a cliche. It's, a, it's funny because <laughs> the police are scary and 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 murder African-American young men. Oh, I get That's it. That's where now. the humor comes from. The what yeah, he the likes murder. I, I see. No, I see. The that, makes, of, that makes a lot of sense. The broken windows policing and the cycle of crime and abuse. <laughs> so, yeah, hey, no, no, it's, it's hilarious when you explain it like hey, that. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> so, hey, 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 hey. So now, 
Stop there. resisting. Hey. <laughs> So now Sassafras shows up. <laughs> and we notice in this scene that this child has a mole on the side of his head that oh is so God. clearly cancerous. He has, it's, she <laughs> might as well be like, oh, honey, here, have some black salve. Just like spread it on his. <laughs> yeah, no, it's growing. Like, Honestly, I was expecting at any minute for this thing to explain to Arnold Schwarzenegger how to put air on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, this kid is mixed race because of this mole. <laughs> it's like half his body. <laughs> yeah, so he's being all sassy and bitchy and everything, and he wanders off. And, and Neek and his wife are like, you need to beat that child. You need to hit your child. What? No timeouts. You got to... Hit him. Physically abuse him. Said the good don't, guy in this movie, to be clear. The good yes. guy. Don't yeah. hit your kids. No. Don't, don't hit Please your kids. Don't, because all you're teaching them is violence, and they yeah. don't, it doesn't. You can't hit your kids, no matter how mad you are. If you're really mad at your kid, you should reconsider why you're so <laughs> mad at a child. <laughs> <laughs> it's about you. You're weird. Because they're a child. It's on you. It's 100% <laughs> on you. Literally, no matter what, it's always about you. To, like, I found a line where I want to edit. Well, what if it, literally, literally, there's no end nope. to that sentence? Nope. There's no nope. what? There's no if. Nope. Nope. No, no, no defense, maybe. To, to be nope. fair, though, to be fair, though, I'm guessing that mole is way better than a goalie mask in terms of taking a hit. <laughs> like he'd be, he'd be fine, and he's the fucking worst. So if you were gonna hit a kid, it would be this one. But don't, yeah, just don't. None no, of them, right? None. He's got a bouncy castle on his face, but don't. We don't we disagree <laughs> with the message of the film about the child hitting. So it would just like disarm you, whatever you did. All of a sudden, the mole's holding your belt. Fuck, no. what happened? So now we use the next consecutive iMovie scene transfer, and Neek and his wife are chilling on the couch, and the wife is all jealous of Lindsay. Yep. And, and she asks the classic woman trap of, do you think she's cute? Mm. Nope. 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 Let me just no. No. Speak to all of my uh, male <laughs> listeners right now. No women are cute. They're all nope. <laughs> they're all weird. Look, there's no better use of my set of skills, namely making fun of people, than when my wife asks if other women are cute. I just go in, <laughs> I go into roast mode until she's mad at me for saying mean stuff about her friends. That's what I do. No women. There's no attractive women anymore. Just my wife. I said, just no, yeah, it's always, it's always just like, yeah, I don't get it. You know, like, it'll be, it'll be like the drop dead gorgeous supermodel on TV. And she's like, I don't see what's so attractive about it. Yeah, no, neither do I. I don't Me understand neither. at all why everybody wants to. It's have too sex big. With They're her. too big, is what it is. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> it seems distracting. Like, ugh. ugh. <laughs> it's all over the place. Just say, like, how many boobs do you need? <laughs> <laughs> I prefer one. <laughs> <laughs> if if I had my choice, I, I don't even like them. <laughs> and then we okay, so now we you, they flip channels a little bit. They argue about whether he's going to go to church again. And then we move on to Lindsay's place where she's dealing with her punk ass kids some more. Right, and he doesn't want to do Bible study because he's a bad child, and and not because Bible study's boring. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, to be fair, this is way worse than smacking him. Like, if you gave me a choice, yeah, you can Bible study with this irritating lady or you can get smacked. I'd be like, smacked? But, oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. But he goes off on her about how, like, you know, he doesn't have to listen to her Bible bullshit. He's 13 now. He's a man. And I'm like, well, you're 13 anyway. You're bar mitzvah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, wait, that doesn't, you're Christian. That doesn't count. Um <laughs> So, yeah, but he wants to go play video games and she won't let him. So he storms off to go play video games. And she says, God help me. How do I deal with him? And I'm thinking to myself, well, the book you were literally just reading says beat him with a rod. Yeah, it does. Know. It does. Check out Proverbs. Hit him something with about a that. Stick there. I just wanted like God to come down and just be like, Lindsay, slap the shit out of your kid. Your kid, your kid. <laughs> if you put the soap in a sock, it won't even leave a bruise, I'm told. That's why I invented socks, socks, <laughs> socks. And since waiting for this film oh to present a logical <laughs> break between acts would require utopian levels of naivety, I suppose we'll take a break there. But first, let me give act the last 40 minutes the hard sell. 
Will the denouement of this movie be successfully abusing a child? Can it actually get worse than the hay? How will this movie later correlate Nerf guns and sex? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the impossibly awkward for three white guys to describe conclusion of Love Different. I really want that fucking kid to get beat up like Private Pile. <laughs> really want that. I want everything that happens to Private Pile to happen to him. You can do this, man. We are so proud of you. Okay. Okay. I've got this. Hi, folks. I'm Eli Bosnick, and today I have a pretty huge confession. I... Go on. I am a balding fat guy. So proud. Sure. Oh. I've got hair on the sides of my head, but it's the hair on the top of my head that we all recognize as slowly leaving my body, which is why I ask my fellow balding men in denial listening to this podcast now in solidarity. It's time to shave our heads. It's time to shave your heads. When you shave your head, you look like a bouncer or maybe a super cool biker guy. Right? And when you don't, like me, you look like your hairline is fleeing a diaspora. It's true. It's true. Which is why I'm asking my fellow bald men in denial to join me in signing up for dollarshaveclub.com. You get a great shave at a great price for just a couple bucks a month. For a limited time only, new members get their first month of the executive razor with a tube of their Dr. Carver's Shave Butter for only $5 with free shipping. After that, razors are just a few bucks a month. That's a $15 value for only 5 bucks. And also, after that, people won't look at the top of your head and go, Wow, that guy has a lot of stress. In your first month's box, you get an awesome, weighty handle, a full cassette of four cartridges, and a tube of shave butter which again, you can use to shave your head so people won't guess you're 10 or 15 years older than you are. After your first month, replacement cartridges ship automatically at their regular price. There are no hidden fees and no commitments. Cancel any time you like, just in case you ever want to go back to looking like a mad scientist in a kid's movie. You, you really do look like that. Yeah. You can only get this offer exclusively at dollarshaveclub.com slash godawful. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash godawful. Because my fellow balding men, it's time to end the charade and the lies and shave our heads. So proud of you, buddy. Thank you. So proud. Thank you. You know, balding's a sign of virility. No. no. Yep. No, it's, it's That's not. true. No, it's not. Citation not needed. <laughs> That'll be 1584. All right. Here you go. Mm, it's not uh, working. Oh, um, I uh, sorry. Try, one um, second. Uh, hey, okay. hey, Larry. What? This EBT card isn't working. Can, can, the, the what? Uh, just don't. EBT. Do you know it. food stamps, the highly stigmatized relief program? All right, can I just? Do you like, mean the one where forty-five percent of its recipients are children? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. And nine percent of its recipients are the elderly. That one, that stigmatized. And program. the card won't work. No, no. Which is embarrassing because people think nobody should ever need help getting food. Why would people think that? I no idea, man. Nation of temporarily embarrassed millionaires. This, this is weird. I can literally think of nothing that I'd more happily give tax money to than food for poor people who need it. Right. Right. Totally weird. I'm ashamed of our military budget. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. And we're back for more of this shit. When we last left our heroes, they were in some other movie with heroes in it. In this movie, <laughs> we're going to meet back up with Lindsay getting ready for black people class. But before she gets there, of course, we have to see Professor Black and Neek hanging out. What are they doing this time when we see them, Eli? They're, they're talking about basketball. With with a basketball. With a basketball. Because because black people just have one. He crossed a guy up. He broke his ankles. It's actually a pretty cool story. He's, to he's <laughs> about to go play basketball, which actually makes this scene a little bit better. But I was really worried that they were just like, oh, they, then this basketball? Yeah, no, I bring it with me wherever I go. <laughs> <basketball."> <laughs> yeah, what that's certainly how I carry. played. I have one in my car right now. Whatever. <laughs> 
So, all right. So now she shows up ready to black it right up, but she's not allowed to make the black noises yet. The video game noises with a handshake. She tries. <laughs> still no. Still no yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah. And so here's what's going to happen. She's going to learn apparently the entire subject of black people and all of African-American studies in this 90 minute class. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. like, I'm glad if white people are making an effort to learn like black culture, it feels reductionist though. It feels like, <laughs> Just like, a little. like defensive driving is more complex than African-American <laughs> yeah, culture. Right. right. It's going to get a Blood master's on the road. degree. You still have to watch Blood on the Road though. That thing about moving over from a construction site, you watch the same video. Both classes. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> So now it's it's time for black people class, which starts with Professor Black saying, good afternoon, white people. Yeah, I, thought, I thought they were all about to yell back. Good afternoon, Mr. Black person. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. His name is Mr. Black. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, exactly. Professor Black. So he starts off his class with what they thought was making a good point. And they are making a good, good point, but they're doing it in such a stupid fucking way. He holds up a picture of just some random black guy, and he goes, who is this black person? And everybody's like, oh, that's LeBron. Oh, that's Tyler Perry. Oh, that's all the black. That's Barack Obama. They don't know because he's black. But it's not really fair. Yeah, like if you ask who's the guy in the picture, people aren't going to say random black guy. Well, right, like, that's right. Yeah, that would have been a bad... The guy was like, I don't know, just some black guy. That's not a good <laughs> answer. Also, right, that's also That's bad a bad answer. answer. <laughs> right, but that would be correct in this instance. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, if he had been holding up a picture of himself in a suit, that would have been fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funny. Why did they do that? Because they're not funny. Because they uh, don't know how humor works. <laughs> I'm going to be we, ready if I ever get this question. <laughs> I'm going to be ready. I'm just going to be like the suspect in every APB on every cop show. Oh, bad boys, bad boys. What's it going to do? Right, so here's our crazy re billionaire remake of this movie. Same movie, same lines, reverse the races. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's about a young black woman comes to an all-white neighborhood oh, to work God. at an all-white consulting firm, and she needs to learn how to act white. Oh, we need to shut down Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> do not give us billionaire you money. Know us. I do not want to be a billionaire anymore. Don't worry. If I know anything, it's that Patreon would never allow such a bigotry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's true. It's, it's good. It gets to the point where I actually have to tell people, like, uh, yeah, no, I make my living on Patreon, but I'm not racist, though. I'm not, I'm not a bigot. I'm, not, though. No, I'm, I'm one not, of the non bigot guys who makes his living. I'm on Twitter, <laughs> too, and I'm not a Nazi. You know, I'm just saying, there's lots of. So now it's time for him to teach them about African American culture, which literally takes the form of dance class. Dancing. <laughs> we are bad at dancing. That's true. We are bad at it, but so is this actor. Yes. Why not find yeah, an actor? He's not a good dancer. Right? Either. If he was a good dancer, I'd be like, uh, I get that <laughs> joke. But instead, he's just like he joins in with the like, oink, 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 oink. and he's like, see, does my skin's a different tone. Does he do the cabbage patch? I think he does the cabbage <laughs> patch at one point. Nice. That was a he weird. He stirs pick. the pot. He takes a shower. Does some <laughs> salt and pepper. And okay, so yeah, he also teaches them not to hide their purses as black people walk by. And now it's time for the when is it okay to use the N-word module of the film. Um, he says never, and I think that's bullshit. I have it on good authority that if I get bricked, robbed, and pissed on between 4.30 and 4.49 a.m. on a Christmas Eve, I'm totally allowed to say it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Chris Rock. Chris bit. Rock you said you could say that. If you don't know the Chris Rock bit, it's really, that, that's really bad, actually. <laughs> that's so so weird. No, Everybody pause and check that out. Verify that <laughs> no, I didn't just make that up. Watch the really Shake Weight commercial. <laughs> Go support our new all white cast version of Love Different. <laughs> it's called Different Love. <laughs> so, yeah. And so we get this whole montage. He teaches some. In that movie, the white people start a K and they K. K. <laughs> <laughs> That's much catchier than Stand Your Ground. Good job. <laughs> Jesus. So That's why Eli's. Good for ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so meanwhile, uh, while they're learning this, uh, Neek is downstairs playing basketball with his buddies. Sorry, real quick. I just want to address the 
specific thing they learned here in dancing. Should Watch Me Whip, Watch Me Nay Nay be a part of a 90-minute course <laughs> on all of black culture? Is that appropriate? <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's appropriate. I, it was, I mean, we're going to find out. Uh, Reason Con hasn't gotten back to me about the workshop I want to do next year. <laughs> oh, but Jesus. Gene, get on it. <laughs> Lazy. <laughs> and now it's time to head downstairs and play basketball with Neek and his buddies, who, by the way, seem to know how basketball works. Oh, my God. This is the best sportsing in any movie we've done by an enormous margin. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're playing a game of... Two on one, one on one on one. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to let that go. You can actually play like 21. That's a oh game yeah, okay, yeah. No, right, right. Regardless, all of these people have played in a game of basketball. It's very impressive compared to everything we've seen. Although it's it's funny because like Neek again is the guy who wrote, directed, and, and starred in the movie, and the other two guys are way fucking better at basketball than him. Oh, so like he's they're brutal. dunking and shit, and and then he took like the 406 shots to get the three pointer there. Yeah, you could just see that everybody else is just like sleeping, and there's cobwebs on shit. Yeah, but he got it. He totally nailed it. It did go off frame for a second. <laughs> it did. So now, of course, his friends are concerned about his delayed procreation, right? So they, because men are talking in a Christian movie. Yep, <laughs> that's all it takes. When are you going to have kids? Yeah, how strong is your seed? Well, right. It's either that or how are your kids, right? Like yeah. it's one or the other. So now we go back to uh, to black class for a video on the differences between whites and blacks. Now, before we describe this video, I want to point out to you this. This is a 14 second, mildly funny joke at, uh, you know, whatever improv night or something. And it is in the mind of this movie worthy of 26 minutes of setup. Oh, this goes it's on the for same so joke they fucking, did earlier. It's yeah, it is. Same joke. It is. Right. In the in the black in the uh do you know black people quiz thing. So it's like this is the difference between how white people and black people react to a black man running down the street. Now, you already know how this goes, so I'm not going to bother to fucking describe it to you for 21 minutes. But now we're going to meet Todd and what this movie wants us to believe is that Todd is a quote unquote real racist and a real racist quote unquote is one who actively hates black people because yeah. that's the only <laughs> way to be racist is to be like i don't like black people <laughs> yes. black people bad white people good Go <laughs> white people. yeah and okay as 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 silly as the fact that this class exists in this universe is um, we find out it's even dumber than that because apparently Todd was court ordered to go to this class. <laughs> what did for he being do? <laughs> right? I order you to three classes of black learning. <laughs> so, you have to be a black guy's butler. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that happens to Todd. So they he did that to Brett Weinstein. Not a lot of people talk about it. But they did that to him. <laughs> Let's make so, that movie too. <laughs> oh, Tucker Carlson can star in it. It'll be great. Please, no one give us money ever again. I just please. It's I. I I'm not embarrassed to use an EBT card, guys. I've already made that clear. So yeah. So this guy's being all racist. So she walks off, and he grabs her as she does, and just then Neek shows up with his two much larger friends and violence him. They're gonna get the shit out of him. Why would you yep. send this message? I <laughs> Why would you have your black characters instantly be like, I think we need to torture this man to death. <laughs> That's exactly how it plays out too. They're like, oh good, a chance to beat up on a white person. That's, uh, yeah. And also, he says at this, at this point, Neek, as, the, uh, as his buddies are like holding Todd back and intimidating he, he he turns to the guy Neek and he says, "Hey man, you never put your hands on a female." I'm like man, sex with this guy is weird. Weird. I, yeah. I I feel like I know what the wife's so pissed about now. And to be fair though, this is the only message of this movie I agree with, which is that hitting is wrong. <laughs> yeah, right. Unless it's a kid. If it's a girl kid, it's okay. Right. Is it a female child? Like, at what age do you get to start hitting them? 
Or stop hitting stop. them. Yeah, exactly. exactly. She's like, if she gets her period while you're on the downswing, are you a bad guy? Oh, Jesus. Yes. I, yes, yeah, actually, you as are. it turns yep. out. Uh, too fast, too fast. Let's build a little, <laughs> we'll build a little space in there for our friend Heath. So, <laughs> <laughs> a little delay, Morgan. Two, three second delay so that Heath wasn't just, boom, right there ready with it. No... No Jeopardy winning answers for Heath <laughs> to that question, please. So, was the answer not obviously yes to the question <laughs> Eli asked? I, I, don't know. Sure. You were, I was sure like, was. when she starts her period and you were like, yes! So I <laughs> just, just want us all to have some breathing room. I feel like, let's all remember all of the context <laughs> of the question, not just what Eli said just now. Or, I mean, after the edit, who knows if there'll be a context at all? You never know. Context! <laughs> uneditable. Context. So, no, Go back to the context. Context told me. <laughs> So now they go for a smoothie. Um, again, we get a 12-minute establishing. If, they, if you cut the establishing shots to normal human size, this movie is 28 minutes long. Uh, but sure instead, is. we get a smoothie ad in the middle of it. Yeah, and he's he loves some smoothie. And, and he cheers her up about the whole vicious racist attacking her thing. He's like, oh, look. There have always been racists, okay? Like, for example, this movie. I mean, it's a subtler form of racism <laughs> than so Todd would, just presented us. So but yeah. I, don't, I mean, it would be a disaster if white women were the victims of racism as much as black women. God, so, I mean, wait, that's not wrong. That's not wrong. Hold on. I'm saying, I'm saying white women like can't even if their latte is the wrong temperature. Racism is terrible either way. Context, <laughs> but it would be everybody. Worse for white women. Thank you, Heath. Just building a nice I'm saying there are, there are weaker stock. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The white Christ. women. Is right. that, wait, was that? That also, fuck, that sounded bad. <laughs> I'm trying to make a compliment. I'm saying black women are awesome. Black women are awesome. You're better dancers is what we're saying. You guys are being weird. Oh, speaking of better dancers, yeah, hey. he says to hey. her at one point, he's like, hey, what did you learn in, her, in your class? And she starts to move her hands in a clockwise motion like a black person. And he's like, yeah, no, that's pretty good. That's pretty much yep. all there is to it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Jesus. And then she gets, uh, the, oh, and then we get the uh, relationship issues conversation. Just when you thought this conversation couldn't get any more interesting. Oh, wow. Is that Ugh. not a smooth transition? She's literally like, <laughs> yeah, can't wait to meet my friend. And he's like, yep, my wife. I hope she's not mad at me. She's always <laughs> mad at me. <laughs> Let's talk about that now. <laughs> I'm an, a great, amazing writer. Great. <laughs> Good, goodly. You're not supposed. You're not supposed to read that. That's a stage direction. That I'm a great writer. You're not supposed to. Anyway, yeah. So yeah, they start talking about relationship issues, which is where I realized, oh my fucking god, this entire movie was built around this. I know this is long, but it's important. Facebook post of advice that she's about to give. Right, that whole, like, where he's like, well, she's my number one. And he's, she's like, well, there's your problem right there. This yeah. is the stupidest thing ever. Yeah, the, the problem is all those other numbers in there besides he, one. That's that's he, the point she's making. So, like, reenact this with me. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay. So, but she's my number one. Oh, see, that's your problem. So, uh, what comes after one? Two. And what comes after two? Three. And what comes after three? Uh, okay, I'm, I didn't know there would be math. F four. Actually, actually, he says six right there. I just want to point that out. <laughs> that his actual answer six? is six. No. At this point, he goes, yeah, he does say six. yeah no, he goes, he goes, what? There's always there's six. There's just more numbers. I get it. Yeah, yeah right. just make your point. But he does pretend that six comes after three. So, so what is she saying? Like, he needs to call his wife, like, not my number one. Instead, my infinite set of positive real numbers. <laughs> like, <laughs> baby, you are all X such that X is greater than zero as a set. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck does this mean? My wife would love it if I said that. <laughs> <laughs> you are so uncountably <laughs> infinite in your scope. You could not line you up next to another set of the positive integers. They wouldn't even, you couldn't even do it. One is uncountably infinite. Math 
love you. <laughs> man. It's the inside of Lucinda's wedding ring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a formula. I've just got it written. Is that a no sigma? Algebraic. It is no a sigma. <laughs> What's happening? So yeah, a so- sigma of my love. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she tells him all this, and then he leaves because it's fucking awkward. So as he's leaving, though, her friend that's been on the phone with her here and there in the movie shows up and just wraps her vagina around this dude's head. And again, this is this guy writing this line, right? So, you know, she walks in. She's like, "Mm, I got to fuck this guy. And I'm like, no, nobody's ever said that about any guy, really. But especially this guy. Well, nobody comes up to me and is like, I love pale, recessive vanilla. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like the black guy thing, like they're better than us. That's true. true. (laughs) So, yeah. So her friend shows up now. He, okay, I, I, again, just to emphasize how useless the scenes in this movie are, her friend now shows up, sits down with her. She's like, would you like to go somewhere else for something to eat? And they do. Yeah. That's the end of this scene. <laughs> the end, And the end of that friend forever. Yep, we will. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Never show the two meet again. So, okay. Meanwhile, Neek's wife comes home and he has left her a Nerf gun and a note. <laughs> oh, he gets me. I love it. Uh, but you got to use a real gun for Russian roulette night. Otherwise, it's not exciting. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> and this one, I was really hoping she would walk into the bedroom naked and he's like in a fort taking the gunfight so seriously. <laughs> She's like, she, uh, she like swings down from the ceiling like Leon the professional. <laughs> he's got like a gas powered mod nerf gun. <laughs> ow, ow! Giant welts forming. <laughs> Should have wore some armor, girl. Throws a battle axe way too hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but instead, it's even more uncomfortable than that would be to watch. Actually, I'd quite like to that watch would be that. Awesome. But yeah, exactly. That'd be hilarious. Um, but instead, he has tied little pieces of paper to the ceiling with strings, and in his best British accent. Tells her that she has to knock down more of the targets than him or he gets to fuck her or something like that. Or they have to wear what's in the bag. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And so she tries to shoot him and she can't hit any of the targets. And then he pulls out his much bigger Nerf gun and shoots down all the (laughs) targets. But black black guys are great at shooting. This this movie. Yes. (laughs) But yeah, so and and then and then he turns to her and he goes, oh, I missed one target. You I've been shooting you down for a month. That's the that was it was they think that's a metaphor. Who the what do they think knows? I I can't really relate to this scene because if I did this to my wife, she would slap all the targets on the floor and then make me wear a chicken suit. So I I tried I tried playing slaps with my wife once while we were waiting in a restaurant and she karate shot me in the fucking throat. So I, I mean, there hasn't been a contest except who can die first in my marriage since then. So I don't really I'm winning by a lot, by the way, just so everyone knows at home. According to Allstate, yeah. I got paperwork. So and and now You guys are into chicken suits? <laughs> Why haven't we ever talked about that? We'll talk about it later. I'm going over. And chicken suits, panda <laughs> suits, really. And now Neek and a character we've never met are waiting on Lindsay. I mean, there's 20 minutes left in the movie. This is a great time to add characters that will serve no purpose and only exist in this scene, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's his sister, and she's gonna give Lindsay her second class in this movie. The second blacking it up montage, yeah. Second class. It's her second class in this movie on how to be black. Yeah, her his sister is honky sitting for the afternoon. And again, again, the woman asks uh, Candace, the, the sister says to her, so what have you learned so far? And she starts dancing. And the black lady's like, yep, that's pretty black, I guess. You pretty much got well, it down. That's pretty good. And, and they have a learning montage where they learn how to fry plantains the wrong way. <laughs> how to... <laughs> Snap. <laughs> yeah, snap back and forth like a, you know. Yeah. Are 
plantains a really big deal again like again if you're learning african-american culture <laughs> you have two days in order for two days later to impress like she's gonna meet a client next week just like i like plantains cut at a 45 degree angle <laughs> uh, all right sister we Ooh. got a deal i've you're had cornrows before in a montage you're great you could advertise for my black accounting firm because let me tell you, there is nothing African Americans like more than a white woman with cornrows. There is nothing oh that impresses God. them or <laughs> makes them happier. Right? Am I right, black listener? Huh? You love it. <laughs> I love how you didn't pluralize that. You know. You know. And of uh, course, the snap thing. I'm sure black yeah, people love to, when white women don't do the snap the thing. Don't forget the how to beat your child lessons, right? Yes. They're, Oh. She gets how to beat the shit out of her child lessons. That is literally a large portion of it. Yes, they're practicing with a pillow. They have a pillow and she's not hitting it with the belt hard enough. So Candace corrects her and shows her how to physically abuse her child in such a way as to leave welts. With a weapon. How to hit, how to hit your child with a weapon. Yes. Because uh -huh. yeah, sometimes exactly. you need a weapon to hurt your child. This movie so has mad. reduced me to all caps so many fucking times. <laughs> And also, by the way, that ends with the, you know, humor bit where she gets carried away and takes it too far on the pillow, which is funny as long as you ignore the fact that they're thinking of a child when they're doing this. As, yeah, as long as it's part of black culture to violently fluff pillows with a belt, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, they're beating the shit out of a kid in a montage. Yeah. So after that montage, Neek comes back. And uh, she wants uh, Neek and his wife to come to church with her so we can have more I don't go to church because I'm Satan stuff. Right. And she asks him if he misses God. And he's like, I don't know. I might have a big revelation at the end about that. <laughs> <laughs> right now, the answer rhymes with bless. <laughs> I was sure he was going to just be like, cancer mom, I hate you. And just like run outside <laughs> right into Kevin Sorbo's knowing embrace. <laughs> it's not your fault. We're atheists. We hate God. Yeah. But, so much. But we do learn that he used to be super religious, but now he's he's not so much. And then we also learn that she's going to cook food for all of the black co-workers tomorrow. But she doesn't know how to cook black enough, apparently. Yeah, she made... She makes green bean casserole, but they, they didn't like it. The next scene, they they didn't like her green bean casserole. <laughs> Funny humor <laughs> with the laughing. And how come white people clap at the end of movies? Okay. We have okay. that conversation. Yeah. Uh, all right. I have been to several Christian movies now in the theater with other people who are not of my race. And I am not the one who stands up at the end and claps. I just want to say. No, that's Heath, and he's doing it ironically. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Are we talking about racially stereotypical movie interruptions? Are we done now? That's the only thing you guys could think of. Huh? Then there. Okay. And now Sassy Son comes in oh, to tell him to keep okay. it down. Okay. This was so intense. This scene was so intense because this whole movie led up to you have to hit your child. You have to hit your child. You can't just talk to them. You can't put them in timeout. You have to hit them. You had to hit them. So this was the big denouement, right? Right. Where she was going to hit the kid. And I was really not okay with it. I was really, really not okay with it. Oh my God. Yeah. So she, so, you know, the kid's being a dick to everybody and she's like, go to your room. I'm changing the Wi Fi password, which I'm like, okay. Yeah. No, that's a very reasonable punishment for a 13 year old. Make him stay in their room. Don't give him any internet for a second. And, but all of her black guests are like, no, 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 no. Your son needs discipline. And by that, we mean bruises. Right. So with the, she calls him back out and she just yells at him. She doesn't hit him. Which, no. again, I can't emphasize enough. I'm very happy about that, like, that wasn't the message of this movie. But <laughs> it really felt like they were gonna, right? Well, I mean, the, the, even down to the point where as she's yelling at him, the, the, the three, uh, black people that she works with are in the, in the, on the couch, you know, like making hitting emotions and cheering her on and everything. Um, I'm pretty sure that there was a smack or something that got cut from the film. Because, like, their lawyer said, guys, you are literally endorsing violence against children in this movie. You can't you can't show it. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm certain that there was a scene. It's the only thing that got cut from this movie. I'm certain there was a scene, though, where she hit the kid. Kids outside uh -oh. with his face on the curb. No, cut, cut. Whoa, <laughs> Jesus Christ. What the fuck is happening? 
<laughs> what is wrong with you people? What, what do you mean, you people? <laughs> What if it's a Nazi child, huh? Let's fight about that forever. <laughs> Who wants to fight about that forever, huh? Yeah. So Gonna as take away everyone's health insurance. Let's fight about that. Yes. So <laughs> as we're sitting there, just overcome with relief that the actual denouement was not her hitting the kid. Um, the movie remembers that pastor character they introduced us to in Act One, apparently. So now we're at a boardroom with him and the whole team. Okay, now this is so fucking wonderful. This entire movie is about this white woman learning to be black to impress this employer. And this scene is where the pastor's like, yeah, so we have some chiclets and some cat food that we're going to buy and we're going to get some t-shirts. And then the black character, who the movie has not been focused on at all, is like, Fuck you, you motherfucking piece of shit. <laughs> Are we sure that this was the end of the movie we had watched up to this point? What is <laughs> None of this scene or the end of the movie is about how black she is or how nope. aware of black. It's about whether or not this man will stop screaming at their client <laughs> because he interrupted his childhood rap song. About Jesus. All right, yeah. So this is how this all starts out. Like, she, she's asking him, like, you know, why do you think that fewer people are coming to your church? And he's like, well, kids today aren't respectful enough. And I, I'm writing, like, you sure? <laughs> Nothing to do with you being an antiquated, regressive institution known in the modern day only for demeaning LGBT people and fucking children? Nothing to do with that? I'm so pleased that you think that's the only problem. Um, but at this point... Uh, Neek cuts in and he's like, well, maybe you're just not doing a good enough job as a pastor. To which the boss, the hallucinating boss, who hallucinations we've completely forgotten about at this point, is like, hey, man, you want to go get some water? Not and be step here. out of the uh, room and maybe go <laughs> not yell at our client? And he's like, no, <laughs> no, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I practiced all night long. This is a professional business meeting. This is totally normal. I made up a Jesus rap and you said I was dumb and I fucking hate you and I hope you catch on fire. <laughs> this is the end of this movie. It really is. I mean, first of all, Nicolas Cage would be embarrassed by this overacting. And then oh, this Nicholas, is when we do the remake, Nicholas Cage can play Nick's part. And he's teaching the black girl how to be white and with Nicholas Cage. People, come on. Look, oh, I know not and you everyone know he has would the do memes. It. He would do Patreon. it. Patreon.com forward slash God awful. We can make this happen. Oh, <laughs> so, and this is also where we get the title drop. Because the pastor's like, I'm sorry, little Neek. I didn't mean to turn off your rap and make you hate God for 20 years over this incredibly trivial thing that most people would have been over with over in like two days. Um, he says, I loved you the same as everyone else. And to which Neek says, well, love different. Title. Is the movie. <laughs> yeah, what? What's your background? Um, are <laughs> adverbs not part of black culture? <laughs> they, they don't have a lot I of feel like leads. they are. That's weird. Um, yeah, it is this what this movie was about? I feel like this isn't what this movie was about. Yeah, you didn't love me correctly, and now I, a grown man, am yelling at you about it. Um, and then, of course, this is where he realizes that he does miss God, and then everyone hugs it out. Yep, that's it. That that's like we've been building to that through this whole movie. Apparently, surprise ending, right? I mean, maybe that's it. He just knew that good movies had surprise endings. He's like, well, nobody's gonna see this shit coming. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. To be fair, if Steven Seagal had kicked through the window and snapped the boss's <laughs> neck and been like, the terrorist threat is neutralized, <laughs> I also would have been surprised. <laughs> would have been a much better ending. <laughs> All right, so now we cut to seven months later for a quick wrap-up. Everyone is wearing a shirt with the movie's name on it. They're like, hey, guys, we're going to make the shirts one way or the other, but we're going to get some use out of them, okay? Right. And they're they're celebrating all the success that this pastor's now had with his youth outreach mentoring program. He says, and I quote, we've already signed up seven kids. This is seven, seven months later. 
That's a massive failure. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> There's five people working on this. I think I could gather seven people in the course of this recording. Is you right? <laughs> Holy shit. He obviously didn't use the hay. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. Should have used the hay. <laughs> I love this line, too, because he goes, the pastor says, we just need to keep finding out what these kids need so we can properly love on them. And I just want to point out, I don't feel like on is appropriate there. Like yep. a Freudian rewrite, if you ask me right there. <laughs> yep. So, And then they all like they all tink their plastic wine glasses. Oh, <laughs> uh, and then Lindsay starts to hey. And it works this time because <laughs> she's black enough but, now. But she immediately loses the rhythm of yes, saying yes. hey. Just <laughs> she's like hey 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 hey, hey. no you hey, just hey, do it hey, the same hey, it's the same hey, you just stay hey, the same hey hey, hey, hey just try hey, to follow hey, us hey hey, hey 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 no just hey like it's, it's like oh my Steve god Martin dancing in the jerk yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now it's time for the outtakes from the film because damn it if they were going to film anything that wasn't making it into the final movie Ugh. Ugh. This movie owes reparations <laughs> to itself. It's very weird. It's a whole circle. <laughs> <laughs> and so, as I was just saying, I find it hard to believe that there was a single second that they filmed that didn't make it into the final cut of this movie. But for the purposes of the outro, I want to pretend that there was. And to wrap things up, I want to ask for your predictions for which cut was deemed too stereotypical for one of Lindsay's learning to black montages. Oh, um... A vaginal orgasm oh, that she has. Jesus. <laughs> Maybe uh, drive by shooting. Drive by shooting. <laughs> she keeps she keeps holding the gun straight up, and he's like, "To the side, to the side." <laughs> but they cut it because every time the black actor held the gun, he got shot by a cop. Yeah, <laughs> and so they just had to cut it. Oh, God, I literally would not have been super surprised if, if right after the cornrow scene, if they had shown him and the sister like driving around shooting targets out of the side of a car, I would not have been surprised. Yeah. And well, that's going to do it for our review of Love Different. Thank God. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet, because I feel like we need to end on the promise of a way less racist movie next week. So, Eli, tell us, assuming all the podcast aggregators don't drop us over this episode, what's on deck? Well, I can't promise you less racism because next week <laughs> we've got six The Mark Unleashed David A.R. White, Stephen Baldwin, post apocalyptic torture <laughs> porn, so y'all. <laughs> I mean, okay, so all you have to know, I feel like, other than the cast, is that the name of this movie is Six The Mark Unleashed. What kind of bullshit sentence structure is that? <laughs> Those words are not in the right order. Six, oh, so comma, so the mark, uh, comma. Colon. Yeah, it's a semicolon. <laughs> hey! Unleashed. <laughs> Exclamation point. Unleashed, hey. <laughs> Clap. Is this the one we got from Jay? Is this the DVD? No, 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 we've, no. We've got some really. Oh, we're exciting, saving that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we got we're some saving exciting, Chuck Norris. Oh, right. That was Chuck Norris, not Baldwin. Yeah, 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 yeah. and his son. That's Bells of Innocence. But uh, you got to, you got, yeah. We're teasing. We're doing a long tease for you on that one. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 96 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, The Skeptocrat, and Citation Needed, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. Except Citation Needed isn't on Stitcher. It's a whole thing. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and the Convivial Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. My white culture workshop for black people is not going well. Since watching this movie... Eli has been forcibly ejected from at least six farmer's markets. Hey. <laughs> hey. We are not ending the show on episode 100. That is a funny joke I tell for your amusement. Stop messaging us and or us. No, no, they don't message you. The They're not messaging you. 
<laughs> the show will continue. It is humor. Also, I am not dying. My <laughs> estimate for health insurance and life insurance was higher than expected because I am a little on the chubby side. My depression is relatively well controlled. <laughs> My 30th birthday will pass and I will remain on this plane. <laughs> Heath's girlfriend is of age. <laughs> No, it was perfectly reasonable at that Dublin airport. Nope. Right? <laughs> no. Everything except for the last one. <laughs> and the gender pay gap is real, fuckers. <laughs> Did you like your trip on Jesus Twitter? Christ! <laughs> what the fuck? The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2017. All rights reserved. Cuando la familia navega en Disney Cruise Line, todos se reúnen para disfrutar de nuestras fiestas de piratas en la cubierta. Y para ver un espectáculo de fuegos artificiales en alta mar. Sabemos que el tiempo en familia es lo más valioso. Por eso en nuestros barcos pueden compartir experiencias juntos como nunca antes. En montañas rusas acuáticas que se salen del barco. Y para hacer los sueños realidad. Visita a DisneyCruise.com o llama a tu agente de viajes.